At the town hall meeting a couple of Sundays ago, the topic of bathrooms came up again. It's a topic we've been wandering around now for a couple of years. How do we take this building, with its split floor and ADA inaccessible multi-stall bathrooms, and make it something that is inclusive to everyone? How do we do this while not spending money? It's a hard question, a difficult question. It's a question for committees and then the board and then probably ultimately the congregation. But I wanted to share here with y'all a conversation that I had this weekend in Lenexa, Kansas with a young man. This weekend, I traveled with a group of our youth to a regional youth assembly at Smooch. It was joyous. The topic for the conference was LGBT plus activism. These were not just our youth. This was youth 14 to 18 from five congregations across Kansas and Missouri, from All Souls, from Smooch, from First UU of Springfield, from Columbia, Missouri, and from Salina, Kansas. The total headcount was about 30 youth and eight advisors. The church was a whirlwind of activity from 7 p.m. Friday until 9.30 a.m. Sunday. Because of the topic of the youth assembly, and because of the nature of UU Church's youth programs these days, the youth themselves had a strong standing of LGBT plus representation. I'd say 30 to 50 percent of the kids were either gay or lesbian or trans or somehow fit into that community. This led to a constant stream of conversation about LGBT plus issues from the youth with us old advisors sitting around, mainly just listening. The topic of bullying in high school and bathrooms came up. In the small circle I was in, there were several trans-binary and trans-non-binary youth, and they began, organically, sharing their stories about finding a place to pee. To zoom out a minute, bathroom accessibility is a fundamental battleground in trans rights. Being able to pee, knowing you're safe to pee in public is a basic human right that many people currently do not have. In recent polls, 32% of trans folks report that they have limited the amount they ate or drank so that they wouldn't have to use an unsafe restroom. 8% of trans folks report medical kidney issues because they don't use public restrooms because of safety concerns. So here I am, and I know that, I know these statistics, but these youth are talking about their real lived daily experiences. And in this conversation is this young man. He is trans, he is 15 or 16. He's very masculine presenting and he's binding. So he passes as an adolescent boy. And he tells me, tells the group, his strategy for using the restroom. He doesn't hold back on going pee at school because he can't. He's at school all day and there are no gender neutral or single stall restrooms. So he has to pee and he clearly doesn't belong in the women's restroom. So he uses the men's room where he arguably belongs. And what he shared is that he just doesn't wash his hands at school. He goes in, heads down, uses the stall as quickly as possible, walks out of the bathroom without ever washing his hands. And he shared that that was because the mirrors, where other people can see your face, are the worst part, the part that feels the most dangerous. He keeps hand sanitizer on a zipper pull in his backpack. As soon as he is out of the restroom, he uses copious amounts, and he always makes sure he has hand sanitizer. He is not complaining as he tells us this. He is somewhat proud, honestly, I think, that he had found some way to avoid the worst part. It sounds like the hand sanitizer is this comfort, a way that he can opt out of some of the risk of his daily life. I don't tell him that hand sanitizer doesn't kill MRSA and other bacteria. 
I just listen and nod. Other youths share their stories. How they try real hard not to use the restroom in public. How they go to the nurse's office to pee once in the middle of the day. At the church where we were at, there were binary restrooms. Men's, boys, and women's girls. It's an old building that used to be a school. And it's clear the signage is from when the building was still a school. However, there's also signage under each old sign declaring where the gender-neutral restrooms are and that nobody better give anybody else hassle about what bathroom they are in. The best restrooms in the place are gender-neutral bathrooms that are single stall. One is just outside the sanctuary, a beautiful, remodeled, freshly tiled, single stall, gender neutral restroom. If you are in worship service and need to pee, this is where you're going to go, regardless of who you are. All weekend, everyone in the building got to pee where they wanted. The young trans men and trans women walked into the binary restroom, shoulders back, comfortable. The non-binary youth used the gender-neutral restrooms. Over the weekend, I saw several youth who actively smiled, grinned, as they walked into the restroom. It was part of the pleasure they had in coming to the UU church, to this big, messy assembly. They knew they were safe among these peers. The bathrooms told them that they were welcomed. I don't have a solution of how to make our building more accessible. I have ideas, but like I said at the start, this is a matter of committees and board and ultimately congregation. But I can't shake the image of this young man each day at school, head down, hustling out of the bathroom past the sinks because the simple human dignity of washing his hands is just too scary. And I can't shake the memory of that same young man smiling as he walked into a restroom that he knew was safe.